Control Tower, this is Barbecue Bomber ready for the drop. Barbecue Bomber, this is Control Tower. Release. Here we are, baby. The best cut of barbecue anywhere. Beef brisket. Right here, right now, on Gut Smokehouse Barbecue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gut Smokehouse Barbecue. Today, my favorite all time piece of barbecue beef brisket. If I were given one option for my last meal, hands down, it would be a perfectly cooked beef brisket with perfectly cooked burnt ends. No question about it. We're going to attempt that today. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, so here we are with our beautiful brisket. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of trimming on this. I mean, there's, if I flip this over, you can see there's a lot of fat. We'll get to that side in a second. Uh, this is a select brisket. So I am going to actually leave more fat on maybe than I normally would, just because it's a select and it doesn't have the marbling that a choice prime or uh, wagyu would have. So, uh, so here we go, we're gonna make this pretty quick. Notice on the bottom here, this is the flat and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the fibers are running in this direction. That runs along the, the one part of the brisket and then up front here is the point and that's where all the yummy burnt ends come from. So in between the point and the brisket flat is a huge hunk of hard fat that is totally useless. So we're gonna carve that out and get rid of that. We put that and some of the other trimmings that we took in a pan, we're gonna put it in the smoker and just let it render down in the smoker and create some brisket tallow. I'm not gonna take any of the silver skin off the back here. Doesn't really, isn't really necessary. Flip the brisket around. Normally on a cap here, there's a much, much larger hunk of fat, but this actually doesn't look too bad at all. Let's see what this looks like here. Just trim a little bit of this off here. But again, we're gonna focus mostly on keeping a lot of the fat on because of the quality of the brisket, which is a select. Other than that, we're gonna leave that on. There's nothing, nothing excess or gross about it. And again, here's the, here's the angle from here. You can see it's pretty smooth. And maybe we'll cut off a little bit of this up top here to just kind of level it off. I don't wanna expose the meat really and then the smoke will flow over it very nicely. All right, so now it's on to the seasoning. So what we do for our seasoning is this. The very first layer is 50-50 salt and pepper. I just use the coarse ground salt or coarse ground pepper, kosher salt, and we give it a good coating, especially on the flat side which is where there's no fat and it's amazing what salt in direct contact with any type of protein does and I'm gonna have a video soon on showing you that with chicken breast where there's a massive difference when you season a chicken breast versus not seasoning it and then you put it in the oven and the same applies to any protein. So we're gonna make sure we get a good level coating of this all around our brisket. We'll let the salt start sweating the brisket. And then the salt will start penetrating into the brisket over time. And what that initially does is it brings out the moisture 
but then because of a balance of salinity in proteins, it will actually reabsorb into the brisket and pull with it the rub that we're gonna put on. All right, so there we go with the brisket. I think we got that pre, oh, we didn't get the size here. And again, I'm, I'm gonna leave that little bit of brown on. That's just a bit of oxidation. It's no harm, no foul. And I think we got this brisket pretty good. So hopefully you can see the, see the seasoning on there. And you can actually start seeing it start to glisten. And that's the salt doing its job. So once that is done, we're gonna take our, we're gonna take our rub our homemade rub and again this here you can use any rub you want if you've got your own feel free to use it buy something at the store there's no right or wrong this rub already has salt in it um, some sugars garlic onion powder I love dried basil so that's always in our rub onion powder paprika I got chili powder on hand I'll throw that in to give it some depth but we're gonna put the rub on the brisket now and we're actually gonna let that sit for just a just a minute or two so that it can get it can sweat before we put it in the smoker all right so again salt and pepper 50 50 all around the outside let that sit for just a little bit and then we put our rub on top or whatever rub you have. All right, now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same on this side. You can see all the pepper there. Now the pepper is not gonna penetrate into the meat. The salt will, but the pepper does not melt. So, but what the pepper will do is it'll help create the crust that we're looking for on a brisket. And that, when it's on the point, Creates our burnt ends. Oh, baby. All right, get our final layer of rub on the fat side here. All right, and at this point, we'll just give it a few, few minutes to sweat. Make sure we got these edges here too, which I see it's missing some rub. And that about does it. All right, now some people will cut off the corner because they want to know which way the grains are running, but once you cook a brisket, it's, it's, it's not hard to figure that out. You just, if you don't know, you just scrape off a little bit of the top part and you can see instantaneously which way the grains are running. I just don't like wasting any brisket because whatever trimmings we don't use for serving, we'll keep those for our famous barbecue beans. All right. Next spot is a smoker. I'm literally going to put it in a smoker like this. I'm going to put a half pan or a full pan on a rack below this so that it captures any of the drippings. And then after about eight or nine hours, once it hits about 165, we will take this and we'll actually put it in the pan so that the, the, the drippings or the renderings from the brisket can accumulate in the bottom and then that becomes part of our finishing sauce for our sliced brisket. Here's the brisket getting ready to go into the smoker. What we're gonna do, open up the smoker, which is cranking away. Woof, woof. Pull the rack out, and I'm gonna take, if you get a shot over here, where the point is, that's gonna go towards a hotter spot of the smoker and the flat towards the cooler spot. So here we go. And there she sits, the big brisket. So again, we're going to put that in. We're gonna put a foil pan underneath to catch our drippings, like so. And we're gonna put our meter plus in here shortly and let it rest overnight. All right, well here we are in the morning and our brisket is at about 170 and we're gonna take the brisket and you can see the color on there, it's getting really nice. We're gonna take it, we're actually gonna put it in the pan and let it half smoke, half braise the rest of the way so that the 
meat side uh, can absorb some of those smoky au jus juices. All right, so here is our finished brisket. The crust looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm gonna try to, my best here to kind of go through what I'm gonna do. Uh, again, this is the point, this bubble sticking out here and this part here, that's where you have what they call the fatty brisket. And then down here on the bottom is where the lean part is. And that's where you get your slices from down here. So what I'm gonna do, just based upon what I know, I'm gonna take my best guess at where I think the fatty part is. And I'm just gonna come in here and cut out. Basically I'm gonna go along this, this line where we cut out that large piece of fat earlier. So I'm just gonna trim off here. And if I've got a little bit of point left on the flat, that is certainly not a problem. All right, so again, let me just kind of lift up and show you. Uh, as you can see, there's that there is the flat, okay? And then this part here is the is the point. You can almost see the, the connective muscle there that, or the connective tissue that's holding these two together. So I'm gonna continue on here and just take this point off and then decide what I wanna do with it. So there we go. And that is the point, that is where a lot of the tremendously flavorful burnt ends come from. So I'm going to take this and just put this in a separate pan right now. And this corner here, I'm just going to trim that off. And look at that, look at that smoke on there, that smoke ring on there, beautiful. So now I'm going to take the brisket and I'm actually going to turn it over and kind of show you turn it over and show you how you can tell which way the fibers are running to know how to cut it. So just because I can see already now with the glistening, I can tell the fibers are running this way. But if you don't know and you don't want to cut a corner off, you can always just take a take your knife and go in here a little bit and it's very easy. You can see exactly how the how the fibers are running. So you ultimately you want to cut your brisket in slices this way so that the fibers are short and that the meat is the most tender. And we're going to take care of that later, but right now we're going to actually take this brisket and we're going to put it back into the au jus and we're going to let that actually solidify. As far as the point goes, let me see if I can get somewhat of a cross section here. Boy, this is a sharp knife and that crust is just gorgeous. I mean, that there is an absolute beautiful looking point. So I'm probably going to cut this, what we'll normally do if we want burnt ends, we'll cut this and I'm going to actually cut it from this side down. We'll actually cut it into pieces like this. Get a nice little shot here of this glistening part of the point. I mean, it is just gorgeous. Nice smoke ring on there and it's going to make for an incredible burnt end. eating this. Oh boy. Oh man, this is beautiful. All right, maybe just one little taste. Mmm. Ha oh. ha. Oh. Ha Woo! Oh my gosh. That. Wow. Oh yeah. Even a brisket from Walmart can be absolutely amazing. If you remember that beef fat that we trimmed off earlier, when placed in the smoker for 14 hours, this is the result. Pure, unadulterated liquid gold. All right, so now we got our burnt ends in our pan. 
You can take a little bit of that brisket towel that we made, the smoked brisket towel. Put that over the top. Try to hit a little bit on each one if we can. And this stuff is great on anything, roasts, burgers. Uh, you can saute anything in this stuff. It's got a very high smoke point. All right. Then we're going to take a little bit of our homemade barbecue sauce, drizzle that on top. Let's so add some moisture in here as well. There we go. And then actually we're going to add just a tiny little bit of honey to sweeten this up. So we're going to take these as is, we're going to wrap them, and we're going to put them in the smoker, and they'll get more crust, more color, and more flavor. Alright, next we're going to take our brisket that we've had chilling, and again this is the drippings that we used to put in our sauce. Okay, so this here is the brisket flat. This is what we normally cook when we do a catering job. We buy flats and we look for flats that are about this size, nice and thick. You know, if you can get two, two and a half inch thick brisket flats, you're in really good shape. So now what we do is we actually flip it over. And as we showed earlier, if you can't tell because it's either charred or there's sauce on there, an easy way is just sticking the tip of a knife under, finding it, and you can see it's running this way here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first cut perpendicular to that, about halfway through the brisket. And the brisket right now is cold. And the purpose of that is just in case you do overcook your brisket, by chilling it, it makes it much, much easier to slice. So we'll show you a cross section here of what that looks like. And as I cut through here, I'm gonna show you what to look for to make sure you're cutting in the right angle. And also, if you can notice here, there's a, there's a connective, uh, some connective tissue that runs in between this muscle and this muscle. This muscle here is the flat, and this muscle here is part of the point, which is something that I always look for when I buy a flat to get some of that point for the richness. At this point now, let me just take this one aside. I'll cut it with the grain right in the middle. So now I have two pieces. I'll have four total, but here's half the brisket. So at this point now, what I'll do is I'll flip it back over and again the grain is running this way so I'm going to slice it like this. I'll flip it back over to the softer fattier side because this side here will make it easier to do slices from. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of clean it up a little bit here. I'll use this piece here as part of our beans. We'll take the brisket pencil thin slices and again what to look for here to make sure you're slicing in the right direction you'll notice here that the strands of the brisket are running this way so you know that's the direction that they're in so you want to cut this way another way of telling is when you slice it you should see somewhat of a cobweb type of structure here where it's about ready to break apart and that's when you know you're heading in the right direction with the slicing all right, so we're going to continue to slice through this again about pencil thick and if you have overcooked your brisket flat to the point where it's starting to crumble you can make the slices a little bit thicker but again that's the benefit of getting it nice and chilled and not only reabsorbs its juices that came out to some extent of course not all of them but it also 
allows you to make up for any type of errors you may have in the potential overcooking or undercooking of a brisket. If you've undercooked the brisket, you could also slice these thinner. And the sauce that we put them in is the type of sauce that will provide additional ability for these slices to become tender. Okay, this next part here, in my opinion, is key to our sliced brisket. So we're gonna start with our homemade barbecue sauce, which contains just the right amount of acidity, sweetness, and smoke to provide that perfect sliced brisket taste. So we're gonna start with about, that's probably about a half cup or so. I'm gonna add a half a stick of unsalted butter. And then we're gonna take the drippings from our brisket flat and add about maybe a quarter of a cup. We're gonna bring this over heat and get this warmed up. I'm just doing this right over our stove here. And then once that's warmed up, doesn't have to be hot, once it's warmed up, we're gonna actually slice the brisket, which we'll show you. And we're gonna put each brisket slice in and get both sides of each slice coated before panning it up for our final serving. Okay, for this next quadrant of the brisket flat, I wanna show you that we have, there's the flat and then there's that connective tissue and then here is the point. So this again is the fattier part. So we're gonna take these, these are the prize slices of a flat right here, where you get a, about three quarters or two thirds of a flat and then a nice piece of the point without too much fat on top. As you can see, we're going through here, there's a little more and more fat on here. But to me, that well, that is one of the best parts of the brisket right there. So again, we're gonna put these in the sauce, dip them in, the sauce is warm. So it allows the sauce to penetrate into the cold meat. And sometimes I'll even let this sit in the sauce for five or 10 minutes, depending on how many briskets I'm doing. And then as you see, sometimes it actually breaks apart and it's just barely held together. Now that is a, that's a prized piece right there. <laughs> oh yeah. And you can take this and pack it away, put it in the freezer, keep it cold, whatever. Reheating it is also a key element too. If you over reheat it, it'll dry out. It's almost better to under reheat it because even a cold brisket slice is phenomenal. All right, so again, we're gonna keep packing these in here. Again, fat side up, or fatter, fattier side up, I should say. Sometimes if they don't fit that way, we're gonna go in this direction here. This is how we build our brisket slice tray. All right, now to show you how we finish off our brisket trays. I'm gonna bring this tray over here. Hopefully you got a good view of that. And it is incredibly beautiful. So every slice has been dipped into the sauce for at least a minute or two, both sides. Now we're just gonna take the remaining sauce here and just do a nice light coating over the top, especially these slices down there that a little more thin and lean. And once everything is coated, there will be a nice little layer of sauce at the bottom. We're gonna cover this up immediately so that none of the brisket's slices are exposed. But that's it right there. That's how we do it. 
All right, well, thank you for joining us again. Gut Smokehouse Barbecue. We did a whole packer brisket. We showed you how we do our brisket flats as far as chilling them, slicing them, saucing them, and panning them. So thanks for joining. Give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for joining us again, and keep on smoking.